what is trust? Um, I think trust is, means to me like being honest and having integrity and just kind of being vulnerable with each other. I was homeless back in 2021. For the first time, I had lost my fiance, I lost my job, and I lost my house, and I lost all my friends, family, everything. Um, and I had nothing, I had no, no idea what I was gonna do. I was on the streets for the first time, for the first time fully in my whole entire life, and I had no one to rely on. My mom, she didn't give a, she didn't give a rat's ass, and all the rest of my family kind of followed suit. Uh, when I put my trust in an institution and they betrayed me, I ended up um, alone and sad and no one to trust, no one to believe, thanks to my parents. Depending on who you're talking to, I mean, for some people it's, you know, word of mouth, just, you know, what happens or doing stuff for other people, following through on different things. It could be something as small as, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I will, I'll sweep the kitchen this day and then, you know, you say you don't do it and that person just starts to kind of lose trust for you. Every time there's an election, I vote. I trust these guys to do the right thing. And what happens? They do the wrong thing. All they're interested in is patronage and and their and their uh, privileges. You know the, that's what the, you know what they're looking for. They don't care what goes on for the people here. They talk about it, but they don't care about it. Peace. Iranian American, so I am. Uh, my parents are from Iran, and put a lot of trust in the government to protect its people and to make sure that everyone is safe. However, there have been um, a lot of incidents where the government betrays that trust and uh, forces women to wear things they don't want to, um, or forces women to follow traditions that they might not agree with, and forces everybody actually of that country to um, follow a religion that they might not believe in, forces this upon them and they don't uh, allow that uh, freedom, which is what a government is supposed to provide to its people. So it's definitely a breach of trust. I was at this uh, religious place uh, when I was a child, and I was a bit more developed for my age. So at the age of around nine, uh, girls are start, supposed to start putting on the hijab. And um, my hijab was, I guess, not proper enough, and so I, got like tapped on by one of the security I guess our morality police and they told me to cover up which um, was you know a religious place and obviously I understand that you need to cover up I was pretty covered and for the age that um, I was I was properly covered but uh, they betrayed my trust in the fact that it was a religious place and I thought that everyone was allowed to be as they are because religion is a subjective thing. I feel pretty awful <laughs> like uh, that I was sinning or that I wasn't uh, modest enough and um, I really carried that with me the rest of the time that I was in Iran when I was that age. Um, I felt like my body was unnatural and I don't think it's the government's place to make me feel like that. Last time I saw you, you asked me a question by the peer about trust and betrayal and organization. You asked me what were the events leading up to a time when I put my trust in an organization and they betrayed me. 
There was an infuriating story last night on the CBS Evening News. The tap water at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, which trains more than 12,000 Marines every year, was toxic for decades. Now, 850 residents are suing the U.S. government because many of them have gotten sick and even died. Chemicals from a local dry cleaner seeped into Lejeune's water system for three decades, a period when 75,000 people lived there and 20,000 children were born. Even more shocking, the Marines discovered the water was contaminated 25 years ago, but allowed families to keep drinking it for five more years before shutting down the wells. Families weren't even told the drinking water was toxic until 2000. This is a travesty. People who are willing to give their lives for their country deserve better. At the very least, they should be guaranteed a certain quality of life that includes safe drinking water. September 1982. In a small town in northern New Jersey, the clock reads 5 a.m. As I sit on the picnic table in my backyard, wearing only what the recruiter told me, a pair of jeans, sneakers, and a t-shirt. I waited while pe petting our family dog, a Siberian husky named Cochise. Suddenly a car horn beeps. I look and I see an olive green station wagon pulling up into our driveway. As I walk by the driver's door, I read in black stencil lettering, U.S. Navy. I get in, and as we pull away from my childhood home, looking back and above the garage, I see my father looking out his bedroom window. Boot camp, Paris Island, Paris Island, South Carolina. That was a game to me. And like all games, I excelled. I was promoted to squad leader and upon graduation was meritoriously promoted in rank. After a week on leave, my orders were for me to report to my next duty station. I reported on time to Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Well, it escalates, and it's a build-up stage all the way to the 80s, 90s, but um, when it became 2000 to 2010, I had two prison sentences, four DUIs, two mental institutions, and a bunch of tickets. But now I know why. In 2017, I was living in Southern California with my service animal, and I stumbled upon the video by Katie Kirk. I was in shock to say the least. That started a six year crusade that brought me here today. I became depressed. Uh, I started researching and the more I learned, the more angry I got, the more sad I got. Why? Why would you do something like this? Um, I became lost and isolated. I became sick to my stomach. I went off the grid. I packed up my truck, took my dog, and we went into the mountains. The Angeles deep into the mountains, off the grid. No paying bills, nothing. I reflected. When this all happened, I have no clue what the two letters VA meant. By this time, we were on the road for about six months, going to different dog beaches and just living off the grid. And we ended up in Santa Cruz, and that's where things changed. Picture 9 a.m. in the morning, 9.15, a man down there with his dog yelling for help because the guy jumped in 71 years old after the dog slid in and I just couldn't jump in there. I just was, I was so disconnected from 
society and people and interacting, I I just couldn't do it, and that's the only regret I have. From Santa Cruz, I ended up in San Jose without my vehicle. Someone hit me. I was brought into a grant per diem program, Home First, and a young lady that was the director took my case. And that's when I ended up in the Plaza Hotel, the first recipient for four months, living there by myself with CC. And I started educating myself on the VA. Since then, I have learned how to successfully submit my own claims and win the first time around. Right now, I have a claim for compensation on an appeal in the last year with a law judge in Virginia. Also, through the PACT Act that was just recently signed for Camp Lejeune, I hired a law firm to handle that. Currently, I'm in San Francisco, California. I was awarded a benefit under education, and I'm at San Francisco Film School with about 20 other veterans. Um, it's been a long journey, six years. At least I know that I gave my all. Well, I've been diagnosed with, um, well, I got severe PTSD, neurobehavioral effects because of the contamination, and Parkinson's. Um, most people identify Parkinson's with, you know, Michael J. Fox, the actor, with the un uncontrollable shakes and all I have some of that but my major issues are the what's called the invisible symptoms um, I got mood swings depression sadness uh, loss of energy definitely sleep problems um, concentration memory loss that combined with difficulty sleeping with PTSD or uh, anger, uncontrollable outbursts, I have that, uh, screaming, yelling on the phone, um, I can't, there's no relationships, family's gone, all, everybody, they're all gone, so I'm on my own with it, and it's so new to me that I'm not taught how this all works, this disease, so I know how to counteract it with something to tame it. And a prime example is simply the school. Um, I'm a straight A student on awarding status. Why not? It's spoiled. Oh, spoiled nothing. You can't put that milk on your mustard, eat it. 